Hey everybody, Jackie Jean here, and I just wanted to share the latest update of Adobe Photoshop Sky Replacement feature. So this is a super cool feature. However, like anything, there are some pros and cons. So I wanted to show how to best utilize this feature and to also share my preferred method of adding a sky and how I do that and so on. So we've got this straight out of camera that we're going to be adding a sky to. All right, so again, I'm in the latest version of Photoshop and you just go to edit sky replacement and you've got a sky. All right, so you want to make sure that this one even more so with the sky replacement feature is you're going to have to be very exact with the light placement. Now, obviously this sky isn't going to work, so we're going to go ahead and find another sky in here. So just click on here and Photoshop has already has some skies and I have already begun to add my own sky collections in here. This is the big sky sunset. So we're just going to kind of go through those as well. So I've loaded these in and to load it in, you can also just click that little add sign there and you can just add skies in as well. Okay, so I'm kind of going through. You just click on the sky, it adds it in. None of these are really kind of meshing well so far. So let's see, let's try this one. All right, so I think this one goes really well, just the light is coming from the, around the same source. So we can kind of make this one work. All right, so we've got that sky, it just drops it in. I I feel like that is definitely a bonus as far as getting a sky quick in there. You're not having to drag and drop that sky on top of the image. So again, you can make the adjustments as needed. You can change the brightness of the sky. You can change the temperature of the sky to adjust it again, more to match that the image. So you've got the lighting adjustment on the foreground. So with the foreground adjustment, that's going to be adjusting the image over here. You can adjust the scale, the size of the image of the sky right there. So I'm going to actually put it back where it was. And all right. So now, so one of the drawbacks to this is you can't just add that sky replacement and let it be done. You're, you are going to have to make some adjustments. So if you look at the trees right here, they're not blending well. Let's go kind of to the other side. So this side, it's pretty well blended. There's a couple spots around that we're going to need to adjust. So you want to make those adjustments. You can kind of play with a fade and shift edge. So you can kind of see there. That's kind of harsher, but I don't want to get rid of it completely. Because then it's kind of getting rid of all those branches. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to go to our layers. So I'm actually going to go to the sky layer and I'm going to mask in the areas that aren't blending too well because I want to make sure that they're blending better in there. Again, so this is basically what I would be doing with my regular skies as well. because the best thing, you want to make it look the most natural. As you can see there, there's different layers you can mess with. So I'm going to go back to the foreground image, getting rid of that. Again, because I just don't like that halo that it was creating right there. So you're going to have to make some adjustments in order to blend it well. So I love the quick process of that just automatic sky in there. But again, you do need to make the right adjustments to make sure that it's blending well. There's the foreground that we changed right there. So that is that whole sky replacement group. So you could actually even go to the main sky and adjust the overall opacity of the sky there. So I'm going to actually bring it down to about 
flatten the image and we are done adding that sky. Now, if I were to add that same sky, not using the sky replacement, let me show you how to do that. All right, so I'm dragging, I'm grabbing that big sky sunset. This is big sky sunset eight. Opening that up. There we go. And now I'm just gonna drag and drop that sky on. So there's a little bit more adding to that process with this. Go to edit free transform. and adjust it. So I'm going to bring it right underneath that horizon line. I'm going to change my multiply blend mode as you can see there. So when you use that blend mode of the multiply, it's really great at blending with the trees. So you're not having that kind of funky halo happening over it. All right. So now I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to mask that layer and I'm just going to mask off that horizon line. And I'm going to reduce my opacity and just kind of blend it in in different areas. So adjust my brush tool there. There we go. So I've got the sky there. So that's dragging and dropping, adding that multiply blend mode, and just kind of masking areas off to blend it in. So that is the way I do it. So now let's kind of look at the comparison of just by dragging and dropping and then using that sky replacement. So here, all right, so let's show you the before and after. Here is the one using the sky replacement. And here's the one of dragging and dropping. So two different ways that you can achieve that sky replacement. And if you just need a little assistance, just kind of dragging and dropping that sky in, I definitely recommend using that sky replacement feature. Again, using it, you just go to edit, sky replacement, and that's where you're gonna choose your skies. Thanks everybody.